Hi everyone, how you doing? Jonathan Lip here from the Big Apple Film Festival. Welcome to Bath Chats. Uh, we're very excited. Our Women's Filmmaker Showcase is coming up uh, January 19th and 20th at the SVA Theater right here in New York City. Uh, we are at Lara Vista Restaurant in Midtown Manhattan with one of our participating filmmakers, Rebecca Louise Miller. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. And Rebecca's short film, One Day Home, uh, will be having its New York City premiere uh, at our event on January 20th at uh, 6.30 p.m. Uh, so let me first uh, welcome Rebecca, and if you could tell us a little bit about your film, One Day Home. Sure. Um, first of all, we're really excited to be here because we made One Day Home in New York City, um, <laughs> and it's sort of a quintessential, one of those only in New York experiences. Mm -hmm. um, it's inspired by an experience I actually had shopping for my first mattress after a big relationship ended. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. We call it a... a, a quirky comedy with a broken heart of gold. Okay. Um, let me ask you, um, in terms of the, I guess, symbolism of it, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the mattress, the bed, so to speak, is, sure. is, is sort of symbolic. Um, so w what I how, how would you say that the, the bed is used as symbolism in the film? Sure. Or I, giving, I don't want to give away too no, much. No, I, 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 the bed is a lot of things, right? Okay. The okay. bed is, um, it's the place you start every day of your life. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's a new life. It's mm -hmm. also, it's a literal clean slate. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a huge purchase that you make that's supposed to last you for 10 years, which mm -hmm. is a huge commitment, actually. Oh, okay. Especially coming off of like a commitment that doesn't work out. Right. Um, it's, it's also, I think, as my character realizes through the course of the movie, it's not just a place for sleeping. Are you a sweaty sleeper? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> do you wake up hot and sticky? Yeah, it's not really a problem. Way better temperature regulators in the high-end beds. Nobody likes a clammy morning. Am I right? <laughs> no, I'm, not. I'm not a... That's a good name for a band. What size are you looking for? Four. So, I mean, maybe you two better work that out before we... No, we're, oh, we're not... We just met. Oh, uh, I am so Miguel's sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Miguel's helping me. You're in good hands. Let me show you the Power Core State 5000. See if you feel a difference, you know. You get what you pay for. Um. What about the shooting location? How'd you go about coordinating that? It's great, actually. Yeah. Um, I will plug them as many times as I possibly can. We uh -huh. looked a bunch of, uh, at a bunch of places. I actually worked for a, a department store at the time, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is, this is all, it, my mm -hmm. life makes sense now, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot here at this department store where I work, and mm -hmm. that didn't end up working out. Um, and I fell in love with this bed store Carl, called uh, Charles P. Rogers. Charles P. Rogers. It's in Chelsea. Okay. It's, um, oh, it's Chelsea. That's where we're having the festival. See? Um, it's <laughs> incredible. They were so nice to us. Mm -hmm. And it actually really brought something to the film that I wasn't expecting. I sort of imagined this being like a sterile department sh store environment when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Charles P. Rogers actually feels like a home. It feels like many different kinds of homes because they also make beds. Mm -hmm. So each time the characters lie down mm -hmm. um, on a bed, it's like they're trying on an entirely new life. Right. Because there's like modern beds and traditional beds. Mm -hmm. and um, So it really worked mm -hmm. in a way. Right. Um, uh, let me ask you about casting. Um, uh, I, you have a fantastic cast in oh this my film. God. Um, uh, very <laughs> impressive. I don't uh, know how it happened. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask you how you went about <laughs> you know, finding your cast. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so... The only person I can sort I, I the only person who like I found and was like that guy um, was Alfredo Narciso, who's yeah. the the male lead who you'll yes. be speaking to later. Mm -hmm. um, he's a remarkable actor who everybody in New York City knows and mm -hmm. has worked with. Um, so I saw him in a reading where he actually played. Uh, it was a reading of this play where he he was playing a mastiff, like a large dog. Okay. <laughs> and okay. they, we played this lovesick dog with mm -hmm. like such soul and heart. I was like, <gasps> mm -hmm. they think this might be our guy. And mm -hmm. I asked some of my friends to make an introduction and we met and it was like, oh. Oh, okay. So you never knew Alfredo. I didn't know this Alfredo, project. but everyone I knew knew Alfredo mm -hmm. because everyone knows Alfredo. Mm -hmm. And then because Alfredo knows everyone and he's like a wonderful <laughs> human being, mm -hmm. um, he was able to make calls to all of these incredible actors. Yeah. Like I didn't go. 
ahead writing the screenplay thinking I was going to be like surrounded by my favorite Netflix right. actors. Yeah, I mean, you have Kathy Curtin it's and crazy. Frank Hartz and all these great like, supporting actors the in there. The greatest as well. actors I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I completely outclassed myself by mm. accident. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And it was just based on this reading that you saw Alfredo in that you. Yeah, he was like a hell of a beautiful, soulful dog. Mm. Yeah. Um, wow. And, and mm. then I, I, you know, I. You could see his work on television. He's just, mm -hmm. he's a remarkable actor. Right. And we did, I mean, he still auditioned. Um, mm -hmm. We auditioned a couple of really great men. But mm -hmm. um, Alfredo ended up being our guy. Great. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was fantastic. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, the rest of the supporting cast as well, are, everyone was really great. It's a good you know, and, it, <laughs> and they really understood the script and the characters. The I mean, rest you, of you the cast yes, is great. Everyone, uh, <laughs> you know, it was really, really great. Um, and and you and Alfredo, your 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 chemistry, I thought also on screen, the two of you together are fantastic. Yeah, it's you important know. to to. I mean, chemistry is is obviously hugely important, mm -hmm. and to spend three overnights mm -hmm. with a group of people in a bed store, like you mm -hmm. have to like each other. Yeah, like, sure. It helps sure. a lot. <laughs> oh, was it was it after closing? Is that yeah? When you did because it? we okay. didn't want to. We couldn't infringe on their sales time. Right. So they were really generous to us, and they like mm -hmm. lent us their security guard. Right. Um, mm -hmm to like watch overnight while we shot and right. we rearranged the whole store and uh, did yeah. our best to put it. But you know, a film crew is, it's disruptive by nature. Oh, sure, They were sure. really generous. Yeah, yeah. They no, didn't that's charge great. us to shoot. So yeah. buy all your beds at Charles <laughs> P. Rogers <laughs> in <nice>. Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, that's great. They seem like really, really excellent people. And the beds really are really good. Yeah. I gotta say, I got some serious naps in <laughs> those three nights. That's great. Yeah. Um, so you, Rebecca has a background in theater, yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> can you talk a little bit about uh, the transition from, th you started in theater, yeah. right? So your transition from theater to, to film. To yeah, film. I don't know that I fully like transitioned over. I It's just, um, film is, I, I feel like film people have some of the qualities I've loved most in theater people mm -hmm. with this additional like array of everyone has this technical ex expertise, which right. is something <laughs> that I've really had to um, mm -hmm. try to catch up with right. along the way. Um, but I think at its core, it's the same thing. It's this group of people coming together being like, through hell or high water, we're yeah. getting this thing made right. <laughs> right. Uh, on a shoestring budget. I mean, <laughs> that's been my experience in theater and film yeah. so far. <laughs> I'm just curious. When I first saw it, I, I thought maybe it was initially a, a short stage play. Oh, um, you know, it sort of you know ha has that style to it. So In I was one just wondering, setting. have you ever thought? Yeah, have you ever thought about doing it as a stage play? I or? think um, I, this one I wrote with the intent of making it a film. Yeah. Um, just because I had like shots in mind. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if most of the stuff I write for the screen still feels a little bit yeah. like the stage for now. Right. Right. Um, right. But yeah, I I. I wrote it specifically to like make it a short movie yeah. this time. Okay. Yeah. How, does, how does someone coming from the world of theater and now film make a determination as to what works best for the stage versus what <sighs> works best on screen? That's such a good mm -hmm. question. <laughs> I, some things just feel, uh, maybe it's about scale. Mm -hmm. um, there are some things I, f I feel like I want to see uh, like in a proscenium or in mm -hmm. like in the round. Mm -hmm. But like that's going to be like I need a whole human body doing this in the moment in front of me. Whereas for a film, it's like, oh, I can imagine like a close up on someone's face. Right. I can imagine like, you know, a shot from like ab above the bed. Right. Um, mm -hmm. The things that we just wouldn't be able to do on stage in the same way. OK. Without puppets or something. Sure. Sure. Uh, and the film is directed by Drew Denny. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca wrote the, f the, the script yeah. directed by Drew Denny. How, how did you... Um, uh, approach Drew about the, the project. We said, please. <laughs> um, you know, we found her through the film Fatales. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, our producer, Susan, is a member of this group, the film Fatales. Susan which Brennan. Yes, yeah, Susan producer. Brennan. Mm -hmm. um, She's also a member of my writing group, and she was the one who was like, you have to write this, because mm -hmm. I told her the story about uh, bed shopping, and she was like, that's a <laughs> film. And yeah. I was like, no, but <laughs> yes, okay, we'll just like throw it together and, and make it. <laughs> um, and then like two years later. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we found Drew through Film Fatales. Okay. She had lived in New York and moved out to LA and she's just been doing all this amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, she has this great feature called The Most Fun I Ever Had With My Pants On, <laughs> oh, yeah. which is yeah. just <laughs> like beautiful and uh, uh -huh. it, it's incredible. So okay. we met with her and we met with a few other directors and mm -hmm. um, Drew just was super 
enthusiastic about it and had yeah. ideas that we just felt like we couldn't not go with her. Okay. Now, had you had you um, had uh, have you worked with her in the past, or you no, just just from new. seeing that first yeah. feature film? I you hope just she w wants to work again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, and I just want to ask you also, a as the writer, yeah. uh, about the title, One Day Home. <laughs> Uh, what's the significance of the title? Yeah, so One Day Home is a reference mm. to the One Day Home Sale, uh -huh, which okay. is when I bought my mattress. But like mm. I said, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to call this yeah. bed movie. And yeah. I was working, I was doing um, employee communications for this department mm. store. Um, yeah. And and so it was my job to like write about the different sales. Yeah. And I was like, had the script in my mind and I looked over it and there was this catalog that I was using for work. Mm -hmm. It was the one day home sale catalog and I was just like, oh, <laughs> of yeah. course. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I thought it was everything about it's just very clever. You oh, know, the, good. The style of the film, the title, um, you know, and, and I mean, I very much related to it. And I think most people <laughs> Could, you people know. have a mattress shopping story. Like uh -huh. the stories that I hear from people now are insane. Yeah. I just found out a friend of mine slept with a guy oh. <laughs> who sold her mattress. Oh, really? And I was like, it's an Girl, interesting, interesting way to meet. Uh, okay. That's my next <laughs> film. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's a story <laughs> into of itself. Done. Wow. Yeah, what I, yeah, I just, I really, I, I really like the way, you know, you, you aligned this mattress concept with relationships and really oh, life in general. I mean, uh, it's just one of those things that I think just everyone can really relate to. Thank you. Um, just uh, my last question is um, beyond. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I have two more questions. Oh, the first great. one is the film had its world premiere at the Austin Film Festival. Yeah. Um, can you um, just talk a little bit about how it was received there? <laughs> what was it like unveiling this film for the very first time <laughs> in Austin? Uh, we took tequila shots first. Okay. I know we sell. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was great. It was, you know, I've watched it a bunch of times, almost mm -hmm. always on my laptop. I mm -hmm. think I saw it on Susan's large screen TV once. Okay. Um, but not, I've never seen it with a group of people who were seeing it for the first time. Right. So with a comedy, mm -hmm. I like forgot where the jokes were. <laughs> I, like some things still make me laugh, but it's like the weird things or it's like the brilliant little moments that like Frank Hartz has or Kathy yeah. Curtin has. Mm -hmm. Just like these <laughs> crazy things that I didn't write or have anything to do with really. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it was really amazing to see people laugh at these jokes that mm -hmm. I knew were, I thought were, were funny when I yeah. wrote them like three years ago. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. then it was like, oh yeah, okay, that works. <laughs> um, so it was really warmly received. We were in amazing company. Some of the best short films, frankly, I've ever seen were in our yeah. our time slot. Austin's a great festival. It was amazing. Yeah. I'm still drunk. <laughs> <laughs> How did you, um, uh, or was it challenging to be acting in a role that you <laughs> wrote for yourself. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that <sighs> S uh, Stallone <laughs> sort of Matt Damon <laughs> kind of thing. Like yeah, you're, you're Rocky, right? Like you wrote it like and you're the star, right? Right. The, right. the bad version of Rocky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, my background is as a character actor. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like, uh, instead of like giving myself an interesting walk and some cool mannerisms <laughs> and a voice, I was yeah. just like, I'm just going to strip it all away. Uh -huh and like get as close to myself when I was at this place in my life, which yeah. was sad, okay. um, but mm -hmm. also like delighted mm -hmm. by things, um, mm -hmm. surprisingly so, just like a bit more of a raw nerve. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was scared. I was mm -hmm. definitely like, why didn't I find someone who knows Zoe Kazan? Cause she <laughs> would be perfect in this movie. <laughs> and I, yeah. and I really, um, I definitely had a, a full night panic attack the night before we went into shooting, and right. I was just like, I've ruined my own film before I even oh made wow. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's um, I it's great that you were able to, you know, take a, a personal situation that was perhaps unhappy yeah. and <laughs> use it to create a comedic, you know, film and look at things in sort of a positive way. And so, you know, I mean, that, I mean, that's what some of the, even some of the greatest comedians I think <laughs> do. You know, like they look at situations that could be difficult yeah. and, and turn it into humor. Which Pain is. Such is funny. It, it could be. I mean, it, right. it's not yeah. other people's pa pain sure, is funny, sure. but if you can make your own pain funny, you're actually... Sure, it can make light of... Yeah, you're alchemizing yeah. it into something useful. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the things I really loved about, about the film. Thanks. Um, and my last question for you is, um, uh, beyond One Day Home, um, can you just speak a little bit about some of the other things you've done, just so those watching know a little bit more about oh, you as a yeah. filmmaker and, and sure. as a, a, a theater you know, actress, and et cetera? So I, um, I had a play premiere last year that I, it was actually my first one that I didn't act in, <laughs> which okay. was amazing. <laughs> I'm going to do way more of that. Um, <laughs> it's called Capacity, and it's Capacity. actually about Maleva Merich, who was the first wife of Albert Einstein. Oh. Um, and 
they have <laughs> it's another mm-hmm. it's another troubled marriage play, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> common theme. That's what the last couple <laughs> years I've been about. Um, <laughs> and she was a brilliant scientist, and it's about these two people who start off on a track together, and mm. she sort of not to belabor the physics, but she mm. gets sucked into this man's orbit, and her whole mm-hmm. life uh, goes pretty drastically off track. Wow. And it was based on their letters and the, the scholarship mm. about her. Okay. Is that, a f- is that a feature play or a short play? It's a, it's a full-length play. Oh, I wow. tend to write them short, so it's like, mm-hmm. you know, 75 pages, but it's, it's you know, it's yeah. dense. There's a lot of, I use physics to talk about the <laughs> relationship. Okay, gotcha. It's less boring than it sounds, <laughs> I promise. Okay, no, it sounds, so it sounds very, very interesting. Yeah. They were a, they were a hot couple. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It sounds really. There was really a lot of like Mozart arias and lovemaking and oh, wow. flunking out of school <laughs> together. Yeah. That certainly sounds sounds fascinating. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Rebecca Louise Miller. The film is One Day Home, and it is screening as part of our Big Apple Film Festival Women's Filmmaker Showcase on Saturday, January twentieth at six thirty p.m. at the SVA Theater on Twenty Third Street, right here in New York City. Rebecca, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you all at the festival. Thank you.